Just wondering, actually, I don't know, are you having a healthy lunch today? If you are, you can polish your halo. If you're maybe tucking into, what would it be, broccoli, uh, steamed chicken, or maybe some oily fish perhaps today, and lots of fruit and veg, then, well, we're envious, in fact. Uh, We're talking nutrition, because it's Tuesday, it's our Good Health Day, and we're focusing on nutrition, and also today particularly looking at some of the things that our kids are eating. Let's face it, back to school this week, whether you're having to do packed lunches that fit in with the criteria, or just trying to make sure they do eat a bit more fruit and veg. So joining me this lunchtime is Bav here, a nutritionist and pharmacist. So Bav, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And as you can ask, are you having a very healthy lunch today? Yes, I am. Which is? Um, It's going to be smoked salmon with vegetables. Oh, very nice. And are you somebody who often prepares your own food to make sure you can eat healthily no matter where you are? Um, Most of the time I do, yeah. I tend to plan in advance and always keep... If I haven't got time to eat a meal, at least keep a healthy snack in my bag. Now, when you say a healthy snack in your bag, I think this is where a lot of us fall down. We're pretty good at eating some of the good things. But then it's the snack front, isn't it? And research has shown that during the Olympics and the Paralympics, we've been eating 10% more chocolate and crisps. We've all gone out to the shop and bought chocolate and crisps to then sit and watch all these brilliant athletes. And I'm guilty as charged. So what are healthy snacks that you can have to carry around with you to avoid that happening? Really, it depends on your lifestyle and your level of activity. But always try to involve a snack that has some amount of protein. Um, So you can have nuts and seeds with a bit of fruit Or, you know, if you really got to rush about, you can get snack bars, things like bounce balls and raw food bars. So they all contain a little bit of uh, fruit, veg and protein extracts. Keeps you going, keeps your blood sugar sugar levels um, stable throughout the day. That's the main thing. And when you say about fruit, I always think that apples are obviously the easiest thing because they're (laughs) they're pretty user friendly. They don't get too squashed around. Although, when I see it in the shops where you can buy apples that are already chopped up in little plastic bags, I do wonder, have we really lost the ability to just bite an apple now? (laughs) We're so convenience-led that we need to do that. So an apple is probably the the simple one on the fruit front. This week, being back to school week, though, particularly looking at what our kids are eating, we try and get them to eat healthy at home, and then they go off to school. And, well, how do you do that? How do you give them a packed lunch? They're actually going to eat that is going to be healthy, but it's not going to be left in the box when they come home at night. That is currently a challenge. I think it comes down to habits, especially at home, what the children are used to eating, especially from a very young age. If they tend to eat healthy snacks and healthy meals from a young onset, um, then they become accustomed to eating those kind of foods that won't be classed as junk. However, when they do get into school, they can be easily influenced by what's around them. So you might set out with a good intention and provide them with a healthy, balanced meal. Um, But chances are, if they're in an environment where there's lots of other kids eating, you know, your crisps and your sweets and your chocolates and your sugary drinks, it can be quite tempting. And of course, children like to share. So how do we get them, though, to eat a bit healthier? So say somebody says to you, okay, as a nutritionist, then um, if the kids won't eat vegetables or fruit, how do you introduce them? What what ideas do you have? Um, Initially, I would suggest cutting down the sugar because when they eat sugary foods and sugary snacks, it suppresses their hunger also they become quite accustomed to sweet foods and it affects their palate so i would probably recommend introducing foods sort of disguised or make fun you know make sort of carrot sticks and introduce you know snacks of celery whatever just to see what they're like or play games with them um you can prepare prepare the foods in different ways you can steam them you can you know eat them raw eat them fresh combine them even include children in the preparation i think if they feel they've had a part to play in making the meal they'll be more used sort of willing to try out eating different types of food and it is interesting i think because often we think that children won't like certain flavors and yet i've yet to meet a child that doesn't like the idea of a chicken curry and rice and so you can have quite a strong palate or eating fish because a lot of kids will eat fish fingers but you think they won't eat other fish so often we think of oily fish as being really good for building our brains whether we're younger or older and yet we don't always feel that we can give them those sort of foods so do you think that's a good thing to start with um i think it's down to again habits at home it depends what you've brought the child up on eating in the first place and what they've been exposed to and that will affect how willing they are to try new things oily fish is really beneficial for all children um we always say fish don't have fingers 
So try to eat food that's as near to its natural state as possible, more wholesome and less refined and less processed. That's the key. Because you know, the more you process foods, the more additives that are put into them and the, the more they lose the flavour. My friend um, always brought up her little girl, but my friend's French and they're just always good at eating, cooking from scratch, natural foods. But she always just cooked frozen salmon, which was quite cheap to buy in bulk. And her daughter just thought it was pink fish. She had no idea it was called salmon or good for you because it was full of oil. She just sort of used to say, oh, pink fish, mum, pink fish with peas and a bit of sweet potato or normal potato. It's actually quite simple food, but really nutritious. And now as a an eight, nine year old, she loves fish. It's one of her favourite foods. And yet probably on the whole, we don't give the kids as much fish. So maybe that's something we can put in. Or what about tinned fish for lunch boxes? Uh, we're talking nutrition for our healthy Tuesday, your good health. I'm toasting your good health with a cup of herbal tea that producer adam said smells rank but it's delicious you see i I just thought i'd you know try and impress bath here a nutritional therapist and pharmacist and director of studies at the college of naturopathic medicine now bath we were talking a bit about healthy snacks uh, before we took a break for the news and also about our children's lunch boxes and how to get kids into different foods like fish and we're talking about oily fish and then just about to talk about tinned fish before we took a break because I think, I think tin fish is such a great standby. And people laugh at me, but I often travel around with a tin of sardines in my bag. If I'm stuck somewhere and I'm hungry, you don't want to see me hungry. It's not a pretty sight. So that's always one of my standby snacks. Um, is that something, is tin fish okay though, as a convenience food? In moderation, as a standby, as you said, yes, it would suffice. Um, but you'd rather it was fresh. Yeah, obviously. nothing can beat fresh food, really. I'll take a fresh kipper in my handbag from now on then. <laughs> Because it is about choices, I think, isn't it? And not about, it's not about lecturing us about what we could or should, but trying to do the best we can given the choice at that time. Um, and you Absolutely. kind of do your best. Um, at the moment, we're eating more crisps and chocolate, watching the Paralympics and the Olympics on the TV. The irony of that, when we're watching these supreme athletes who must have fabulous diets, that just must make you That's laugh. That's quite amusing. Yeah, we don't learn, do we? Or perhaps we do, uh, a bit at a time. And we're looking at the kids going back to school this week. Um, £1.90 seems to be the cost of a meal in schools, we worked out, doing a little straw poll in the office. And that must be very difficult for schools and education authorities to deliver nutrition for children within a budget. And often we do think that it has to be expensive to eat healthily. So when you have clients come to you for advice, how do you get us to eat healthy without it costing a fortune? Because money's always tight. So how do we do this? What are the good things to buy that are nutritious but not expensive? Is it co- costing a fortune or is it costing you your health? You've got to look at the, the overall benefits. I know convenience food is much cheaper and much quicker to buy. But if you prepare and you're prepared to cook some of your food and maybe compromise on some other luxuries, maybe if you see the long-term benefits of your health, your longevity, you know, your genetic performance on, on a whole on a bigger scale then you'll realize that maybe if you put a bit more into yourself you'll find that your skin glows better anyway and your eyes are brighter anyway and you have more energy and your, your nails grow better and everything else that these superficial products um, claim to do for you so maybe if you spent more money on the inside it would show on the outside and I guess actually what you said there is very pertinent as well, the idea of time, because yeah. there's so much convenience food. Like the other day I thought, when did this change? Was it about 10, 15 years ago that the high streets did not used to be full of 10 different places with fresh, tempting cooked goods and cheese slices and sausage rolls everywhere you look, tempting you with the smell and the convenience of it? We didn't used to all walk down the street eating, did we? No, not that I recall. But now you get tempted so much more. And um, Looking at the idea of healthy nations i think we're now second behind america for the obesity crisis and illnesses like diabetes and that's something you've just been recently touring about and lecturing overseas so the impact of food on things like diabetes yes um nutrition is crucial um in any sort of um area of health especially diabetes because as you know diabetes is about your body's ability to transport glucose which is your energy and where you get this glucose from is obviously your food and how we've evolved over thousands of years to become this perfected human being was by the use of food in its natural state where we extracted the glucose for energy what we've done now all of a sudden is we're providing our bodies with the raw product ready to go and then we're moving less and we're under more stress than you can ever imagine and then what do you expect the body to do it's completely being confused metabolically we're signaling it to do things it's not designed to do and this is where the problem starts 
So as well as a bit more exercise, from a nutrition point of view, what kind of foods are good to avoid and prevent diabetes? Really, um, anything that's going to make your blood sugar levels rapidly rise, i.e. foods that are just readily full of sugar, sugary drinks, refined carbohydrates, you know, your spreadable sugary spreads, um, anything that really doesn't involve much chewing as well, because unfortunately we might mean well, but people do say, for example, say, well, I'll have my smoothie today. But without the actual whole cell structure and the fibre from the fruit, how quickly are you absorbing the fruit sugars? So there again, it comes down to education and knowing and having the knowledge so chewing a bit more, avoiding too many sugary foods for the diabetes. And in, in exchange, what should we eat instead? What are the good things to eat? Who are the good guys here? Well, really, ideally, we should be eating a lot more vegetables and fruits and healthy proteins as well as the healthy fats. So you're looking at your whole grains, your oats, um, you know, your brown um, rice and your vegetables, all sorts of vegetables, your cabbage, your broccoli, your pak choy, beetroot, anything really that's natural again I I will repeat again and again as long as it's as near its natural state as possible the healthier it is and um, also your fruits really you want to eat more vegetables and fruit and five a day is probably the minimum we would recommend eight a day is more appropriate really yikes so instead of five <laughs> a day it's now eight a day and a portion tends to be what sort of size of fruit um, or veg probably if you look at your own palm about the size of your own palm, so that's a good way of knowing. Um, roughly looking at the palm of your hand, that's about a serving. Okay, so we've got to fit in now eight of those a day, <laughs> not five a day. But not just eight apples, it's not good just to eat the no, same one, is it's it? it's a broad variety. Um, you're looking for as many bright colours, which contain the phytonutrients and the antioxidants, and of course the soluble fibres, which help to take out the toxins from your digestive system. Um, also, the fibre keeps you moving regularly. The protein helps to build healthy skin, healthy muscles, and of course your DNA. And when you say the protein, we mean eggs, fish, fish lean meat, healthy meat. And just bear in mind that these days, even the animals aren't the healthiest because they're not running around like they used to be when we used to eat maybe 50, 60 years ago. So there's that to consider too. You're looking at the lean meats. And you mentioned uh, earlier, actually, when we were playing a song about beige foods. <laughs> Yeah, all the foods that seem to look like one colour, your refined foods, you know, your processed cheese and your, you know, one minute jobs in the microwave, all the foods seem to be like a beigey, creamy colour. They tend not to contain any sort of beneficial nutrients or fibre or phytonutrients, so best avoided really. And if you do indeed eat with your eyes, as they say, then a plate with lots of bright colours on it, whether it's green peas or broccoli, carrots... It does look more appetising. Yeah. You are more inclined to want to eat like that, aren't you? In an ideal world, a meal should make you feel energised. If your meal is making you feel sluggish, then something's not right there. Well, as we head into September, with some good sunshine still, but, you know, autumn's round the corner. It's those nice big pots of soup, I think, with lots of beans in, and good cheap root vegetables, nice warming food. That is the sort of thing you do fancy in September. Although we've been eating more soup than ever this summer. Apparently half as much soup as normal has been sold <laughs> on top of the normal amount. So uh, we've all been heading to the wintry foods already. Uh, Bav here, thank you very much for joining us, our nutritional therapist for our Healthy Tuesday. And we'll let you head off for your smoked salmon and vegetable lunch because she is very healthy of course as a nutritionist she would be